before I get into what we're going to cover today, I want to talk a little bit about the vision of gravity and what we're hoping to achieve and you know why we're working so hard and, and staying in this. I've been at uh, I've been at this now for going on 14 years and uh, it's been my life my life's work. Um, I'm not I'm not necessarily that old yet, um, but I will be someday. And I honestly can say that I, I hope that I'll be standing up here, you know, on the same stage, working with all you guys and working on these same problems and trying to create this change and reform 20, 30, or 40 years from now. Um, basically, the why behind what we're doing, we really want to stand up for the little guy. We want to take care of independent people, independent business owners. We really believe in entrepreneurship. So everybody at Gravity is an individual CEO. They're an individual entrepreneur in their department. And that's been a real key to how we've been able to create so much product innovation in such a relatively short period of time. But we actually think that there's a lot of people that don't work at Gravity that are the exact same way. Some of them are business owners, but uh, all of the business owners in the room here probably can think of a key employer to or a key advocate or two that's entrepreneurial for you, that's inspirational for you, that keeps you going every day. And so you all are the people that really inspire us to keep going. And that attitude and mentality that we share has just been phenomenal for us this year. Uh, we have a couple programs we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the last of which is our working capital program. So probably uh, seven or eight years ago, um, one of our clients came to us and they're actually getting kind of like a loan, but it was kind of like a loan shark loan from one of our competitors. And they were charging them about a 100% annual interest rate on this loan. And it was an independent business owner that really had no other choice but to take this. And you know, we saw that and we were losing a client because as part of the loan deal, they were switching their credit card processing. But we really saw that it was wrong because their fees were going up, their service was going to go down. They were paying, you know, a, a rate that's just astronomical uh, for the financing that they were uh, getting out of the deal. And they really had to, but it was completely unfair to them. So we came up with an idea that we were going to try to raise some money, save some money, identify some uh, banks to partner with, um, Home Street Bank here, thank you for supporting us in this, uh, to come up with a financing program that would be easy and accessible for independent businesses. And uh, I'm really proud to announce that since then, we've actually put $20 million invested out there in the community. And this year we actually did about triple what we'd ever done before for this product. So it was a phenomenal product year for us in developing that product. We're going to give a little bit more detail about that um, a little bit later. Danny's going to come up. Another thing that we wanted to do was with credit card processing, it's kind of a necessary evil. And what we've been good at is making it less evil. And it turns out just being less evil isn't that sexy. But we are sexy. <laughs> So we, we said, what can we do to not just be less evil, but actually add value? Every time you accept a credit card as a business owner, you're paying way more money than the value you're actually getting by accepting that card. And we can't change that overnight. That's a multi-decade goal that we have to reduce that friction and reduce that cost down to zero or down to something where it's really a value add rather than a hidden tax. However, in the meantime, we said, we're going to create business intelligence and analytics when you accept a credit card so that you know where that customer is coming from, how often they're coming to your store, what advertisement or social media campaign got them into the store, and give you all kinds of information about your clients as long as you're paying this astronomical amount, you might as well get some of this value and information. And we didn't actually know how it would be received because it was kind of visionary. There weren't a lot of people doing it. And I'm really uh, pleased with the product. We're going to give you guys a demo and show you a little bit about that product. Uh, we already have uh, many, many businesses using the beta and receiving amazing feedback. And uh, it's been a really successful launch and really exciting. So we're excited to share that with, with you all. Um, we also want to talk about the big headline, the gimmick that got you here, which is the partnership, Gravity Payments and Apple Pay. We're so incredibly proud to be on the forefront of this. Um, you know, this is a new payment method, 
Has anyone out there used Apple Pay yet by a show of hands? Got a few? It's really exciting because it's a transaction that's secure. When you use your credit card, there's 16 digits. And it's the same 16 digits. But when I see you out there, I can recognize you. And I don't see you as 16 digits. You're not 16 digits to me. And so we're going to talk about how do we think more intelligently for security and for ease and making things more convenient for you so that somebody else can't impersonate you just by having 16 digits. And as a merchant, you can't be vulnerable and liable for fraud from taking a card from the wrong person just because somebody was able to get those 16 digits. So it's a paradigm shift. And it's one that our industry has been trying to make for years. And we are so excited about the partnership with Apple because it's a chance for it to work, and I think it's a really good chance. Um, I use the product all the time. You know, I, I got the iPhone so I could use it. And uh, it's, it's really fun and easy. For me, I like it because I used to carry four or five different credit cards in my wallet. I got you know different cards, depends, work or personal, credit or debit, and then maybe um, certain cards go with certain brands from a loyalty perspective. So now I can keep all those cards in my phone, my wallet got a little slimmer, and I can get around a little bit easier. So it's been really fun for me. And just the idea that we would be on the forefront of a project with the largest company that market, market value-wise in the world has been really gratifying and really exciting for us. So first of all, the number one reason why we want to be out here is it's really great for us to spend time with our friends and family and the people that really support us. So that's first and foremost. But secondly, we're going to talk to you about a few of our products since we're here, the ones that I mentioned, and then hopefully we're going to have a few toasts, a few drinks, and then uh, be on our merry way. So thank you very much for coming, and I would like to welcome Becky and Nick up to talk about Apple Pay. If you join me in welcoming them. Uh, I wanted to say a little bit about why we're here. Um, there's a ton of information out there on the consumer side of Apple Pay, how to accept it, um, what kind of phone you need, but there's not a lot of information for uh, business leaders like yourself as to, well, what kind of equipment do I need? You know, will my credit card terminal be able to do this? Or maybe my point of sale system? So I'm going to be kind of touching base with that as well, as well as uh, doing a demo on Apple Pay later on. Uh, but first, I want to talk a little bit about the technology that's behind Apple Pay. Um, anybody here familiar with uh, NFC by show of hands? All right, I see a few out there. So NFC is uh, the technology that really drives uh, the payment process behind Apple Pay. Um, now the symbol behind me, this little wave, you've probably seen that around for a few years now, possibly at McDonald's or Whole Foods, maybe on a machine like that. Uh, but that's kind of the unofficial NFC symbol. Uh, NFC has been around for years. It's been in your credit cards. Uh, you might see that symbol on the back of your card. Uh, if you have a key fob to get into your apartment building or your house, NFC is what drives that. So Apple saw this technology and decided, you know, it would be really neat if we could somehow partner that with our phones and banks and be able to make it really easy to take payments via your phone. Just like that one there. <laughs> so one of the nice things about Apple is they like to make things incredibly simple for the user. So if you have an iPhone 6 or a 6 Plus, you can do Apple Pay, all right? Hello? We're good. Um, so yeah, if you have an older phone, you don't have the technology built in, but as soon as you upgrade, you can uh, use Apple Pay as long as your bank's partnered with Apple. Now, what's, one of the nice things about using Apple Pay is that uh, with the NFC, they did a lot of work on the security side. Like Dan was mentioning before, uh, this is kind of a big revolution when it comes to payments. So instead of just swiping your card and it's transmitting your full 16-digit card number, when you use Apple Pay, it takes your card number and by using a really advanced algorithm, it kind of jumbles it all together and creates what is uh, called a token through tokenization. And the best way I can describe it is it's kind of a one-time use punch card. So when you go to pay for something and you use Apple Pay to pay, 
It generates that token, it sends it across, it authorizes the sale, completes that token is no longer being able uh, to be used again. It's one time use only. Um, now, NFC also shares uh, a lot of security features with another technology that we're going to be talking about called EMV. Uh, my colleague Emma here is going to be coming up to stage here and talking about a uh, EMV as well as the security similarities between Apple Pay and EMV. So uh, please welcome uh, my colleague Edwin here. All right, how's everybody doing? All right, all right. So let's talk about EMV. And the first question I want to ask to everyone is who has heard of EMV? Couple of people, okay. How many of those people that raise their hands know how EMV affects you and your business? Maybe a couple, maybe a little less, okay. Well, ideally, you'll get to learn a bit of information here in just a couple minutes. So, uh, background on EMV is it stands for EuroPay, MasterCard, and Visa. And it's actually an older payment type that's been around outside of the US for a long time. But we're starting to see it come here and be issued by banks and to customers. Uh, the primary reason for that is security. It's similar to Apple Pay, where it sends through a token with the transaction so that it's more secure for the business and for the customer. Um, you might hear it referred to as like a chip card or a card with a chip, and that's exactly what it is. Becky has my card. Um, I wouldn't recommend showing it to everybody. Like this, you know, <laughs> but to see what it looks like, that's what it is, right? It's a, it's a technology, it has a chip in there. The terminal or point of sale device reads that chip and sends to that token X transaction. So, um, you know, with that, it sounds a lot different. And I imagine that a lot of business owners are thinking, how is this going to work when I run it? How are my cashiers going to do this? And it's really pretty easy. It doesn't change a lot. So, that can make you look. Did you show them how this works? Uh -huh. system, uh, we'd have to do a little research on what system you're using and what hardware they're compatible with. 
but more than likely it's just going to be an add-on piece of hardware that allows you to accept this type of payment. What's the price range? On the hardware? Uh, hardware price ranges, it depends really on what you're set up with, um, but it could be as low as you know, $15, $20 a month rental, or it could be as expensive as a couple hundred dollars depending on what system you already have in place. Any other questions? Yes, in the back. How does it affect e-commerce? So with Apple Pay or EB? Uh, well, Apple Pay right now has a couple of apps, so Target is an example. When you're checking out in the Target app, you can say pay with Apple Pay, right? And you put your finger on the thing and you pay. Um, I don't know that it's, it's great for a traditional e-commerce. You can't use it from a computer, per se, but you can use it on your phone still through apps. Um, with EMV, it, it doesn't really have an effect. EMV is designed for security at the point of sale. That's the primary reason why. Do you guys think uh, pay at the table will come in with restaurants, or what do you think is going to happen? Really good question. Uh, so, good question. Uh, if uh, how is that going to affect pay at table? Um, again, it really depends on uh, the hardware that's going to be made available. Um, if you have, let's say, a, a tablet point of sale system, and the point of sale uh, company, the app maker, uh, has partnered with a hardware manufacturer where they have a wireless uh, pay at table system, uh, you could pay a table that way. Uh, but it really depends on what the hardware manufacturers are going to be going for. Uh, right now, I've seen. Uh, mainly just add-on pin pads that are customer facing. Uh, haven't really seen anything just yet come down the pipeline for pay at table. All right, well if not, uh, we do have a booth set up over here in the corner on the right hand side, or my right, your left. Um, after the presentations are over, we will have our uh, system set up so you guys can take a look at it. We'd be more than happy to demo it and answer any questions. And uh, Do we have a last minute question? Yes. So the question is, will everyone have EMD cards and have to switch to that? Yeah, I mean, the short answer is, is yes, right? But because it's starting to come to the US now, it's going to take a little while longer. It costs banks more to produce these cards, so I think initially they weren't really excited about it. And smaller banks, you know, it's going to take them a little longer. The, the card that I have, they just sent it to me just because. Um, but eventually everything will shift to that, yeah. Good question. Okay, um, yeah, if there's no more questions, like Nick said, we'll be over there. We're going to bring up Emery and Leah now to talk about some, some more trends and products that we're seeing that Dan mentioned earlier. So, welcome them up, please. Uh, specifically with uh, payments technology, which has changed drastically uh, in the last uh, two years or so. Uh, what we want to talk about tonight, uh, what Leah and I want to talk about, is uh, data analytics. Um, so, a little over a year ago, we started an initiative at Gravity to bring uh, data that's traditionally only been utilized for um, you know, large, powerful retailers with a huge budget, um, and try to bring that to the independent business owner and to the gravity clients. So in the past year, we've taken the data that in the past we've traditionally just held, uh, stored securely, and only really accessed in the case of a uh, chargeback or refund or something else going wrong. And we've taken it, we've molded it, and we've now presented it back to our clients in a way that it makes it really easy to gauge uh, various business uh, decisions and, and marketing decisions. You can actually find out a lot about your business just by the credit card numbers that are passing through it. Um, and uh, we, we gauge the success of this uh, program, the product development success, by the number of questions that we can answer using this uh, using this data. So I uh, have a few of my favorite here, and I just want to read them for you briefly. You can answer que questions such as, who are my best customers? Did changing my product or menu have the desired effect? How many new customers did my marketing campaign bring in? Are my marketing campaigns just attracting the uh, coupon flippers, or am I able to convert them into loyal customers? Where do my customers live? Where else do my customers shop besides my business? 
and how do my revenue trends compare to those of other similar businesses in the area? So those are just some of the questions you can now answer using just the data that's automatically already passing through your business. <coughs> it's our goal to continually increase the number and type of those questions. And, uh, and really, we, we haven't really stopped there. We've taken it to the next level where you can actually link the customer's contact information and their name to their that anonymous data. So by doing that, you have a ready-made, cost-effective CRM but uh, more importantly, you also have an automated marketing program that allows you to reach out and touch your uh, best customers based on their individual uh, spending history. So we found that to be uh, very powerful, and it really helps you link, make, make the, the link from kind of raw data into action that actually supports your business. So now I'm going to turn it over to Leah, and she's going to talk a little bit about an example where this was uh, put into practice. Hey, um, you know, one of the things that I love about Gravity is we have all these amazing tools, right? So we have Apple Pay, we've got Working Capital, which Danny will talk about. Analytics has been probably one of the things that I've been most personally excited about because um, my role at Gravity, and, and to Dan's point, is we really, truly really are all entrepreneurs. Uh, my role is is a unique one because I get to take all these awesome tools that we have and go out and, and put them in, and see them in place. We get to see you guys using them. Uh, analytics has been exceptionally exciting because, uh, I mean, there's a million different reasons, but I'm going to give one example today. I'm a pretty visual learner, so uh, I, I think this story really encompasses how people are using the analytics tool. Uh, there's a customer of, of mine, it's an Italian restaurant, and they, uh, they enrolled in our analytics, uh, in, actually in our beta test, so literally at zero cost to them, they were able to start tracking some of the data that we have readily available. Uh, it's funny because he he loves the battle pack coupons, right? We all get those in the mail, the, the stacks of, of thick envelopes that have many, many coupons on them. Um, he, he literally uses that as his only marketing tool. Uh, besides his you know, regular customers, he uses that to, um, to get his name out there. Uh, how the battle pack is designed is they designate you specific zip codes, right? So, uh, once he enrolled in our analytics tool, he was able to track exactly where his customers were coming from, which zip codes, and what we found was something really interesting. Uh, we found that specifically, most of his customers were coming from the zip code that the valve packs were being distributed. So, to you and I, that sounds like that's working, right? That, that's great news. What we found, on the contrary, was a little bit unexpected. Um, with literally zero cost to change which zip codes those battle pack coupons were distributed, he was able to increase his A, market share in, in a new zip code, but also in, uh, in a way he was able to increase his branding. You know, people started to recognize his name more, started thinking about, you know, maybe we should try this for dinner, and, um, you know, it, it cost him nothing. It was information that we had available, and, and it was really, you know, pretty amazing to see and, and, and a, an amazing value that we were able to add with, uh, you know, just a really creative solution. So, uh, you know, there's a million different ways to use this tool. It's, you know, it can sync to your social media, it can sync to your loyalty programs. Um, it's, you know, it's really amazing to see when people use it and how they can use it. And, you know, again, to everybody's point, it's, it's information that we have and what we're trying to do at Gravity is find other ways to add value in addition to, you know, helping people with their service and, uh, and their rates. And, and this is one that, that I'm really excited about in addition to all these other tools. So, yeah, that's it. I think we're going to turn it over to Danny, who is going to speak to us a little bit about working capital. Thanks, guys. Um, so yeah, today I want to kind of briefly talk about our working capital program, which is, um, Dan kind of gave you the history of the program and how it came about. Um, but it's a program that we're, we're really proud of here um, for a couple of different reasons, but really it just, it allows us to uh, invest into our local communities and local small business owners um, and really try and connect on them on a level that we haven't been able to before with some of our other products, um, and really sharing their success. So. Um, Dan gave you a little bit of the history about how the program came about, but over the last year, we've really grown this program as well, and there's a couple reasons behind that. 
Um, first of all, we recognize that this is a great way that we can continue to add value to our customers. Um, as we mentioned, we're, we as a business are always looking for ways to add value. Um, and then second, we also, we heard a growing sense of frustration from small business owners and some of our clients that we've worked with that the lack of financing that is available to them. Or when financing is available, some of the hoops that they had to jump through or how long the process would take for them, they weren't able to get the financing they need um, in a timely fashion. So what we set up to do was we really tried to simplify that process and simplify the whole financing program. Um, we did this in a couple of different ways. First of all, we really simplified the application process to make it quick and easy for you to apply um, and ultimately find funding. Um, our average turnaround time from when we actually receive the application is usually three days. We recognize that when, when small business owners need capital, they usually don't have a chance to plan for that, whether it's a piece of equipment breaking and they need to get back up and running by the next day, um, or another opportunity presents itself. You don't always have a couple weeks or a couple months to find the finance, financing that you need. Um, secondly, we, uh, we really simplified the repayment method. Um, we got rid of the, the classic way of repaying loans or financing deals where it's um, either directly debiting your bank account or writing a check. Instead, the way that we get repaid uh, is directly through your daily processing volume. So we withhold a set percentage um, of your processing, and each day that percentage comes back, or each day that's taken out of your deposit and is used to repay the working capital deal. So with this unique method, it actually kind of works for your business as um, when your business is doing good or when there's a high month, um, you're repaying a little bit quicker than you would, or when there's a slow month or a slower season for you, you're not repaying as much. You never have to worry about late fees and there's um, never any set amounts or fixed amounts that you need to repay each month, which is something that we really received positive feedback on. Um, so, as I mentioned, we've really grown this program over the last year. Dan kind of spoke to that before, but this year alone we funded nearly $7 million in new deals. That's when everything from um, auto shops getting a new piece of equipment, a restaurant adding a patio or adding a second location, um, or a retail store deciding to redo the inside of their um, store or purchase new inventory in advance. Um, so one of my favorite parts about the program is really being a part of those stories and being able to share in the success and hear the stories from the merchant about how we're really able to add value to them, how us giving them the capital they needed at the time they needed was it really what made their business flourish or grow. Um, and that's what this program is all about. It's really about giving you the capital you need to grow and expand your business. So um, quickly, I want to show you guys just a short little one minute video that kind of gives a customer's perspective of this program and kind of speaks to how it works for them and the types of ways you can use it. The person that's going to be speaking on the video is actually the owner of a restaurant called Manhattan here in Capitol Hill. So I think that really kind of speaks to what this program is all about. It's a very unique and flexible program, um, and we really try and tailor it to meet the needs of the specific customer at that time. So um, I do want to open it up for any questions that you might have about the program. I recognize that it's pretty uh, business specific, so me and my colleague John will be over there to talk to you about any like unique questions you might have about how your business could fit in this program or what we could offer to you. But if you have any general questions about the program, please feel free to ask. Yep. Um, so it's pretty flexible. Right now, we don't offer a specific kind of line of credit program, but it's something we're definitely open to talking about. And we really, like I said, there's no set rules or guidelines to how the program works. If it's something that we feel will work for you and work for us, we're more than happy to talk about it. Anyone else? Awesome. Well, I'm going to hand it over to Dan to kind of wrap up this presentation. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, and just to address the line of credit question, I know one thing that we have done that's similar, because we have such a uh, quick turnaround time, um, a lot of times we're able to give somebody a letter kind of stating what the expectations are and kind of do a pre-underwriting process. We have a lot less red tape. You know, I, I feel bad for my banker friends because I know they have to go through a lot to you know, get something approved. And, um, I really think actually for uh, $100,000, $200,000, it's questionable if it's even worth it for them or the business owner to go through a full underwriting process sometimes because there's not a huge amount of revenue that they're achieving. And you know, for FDIC compliance, they have to do you know, this huge, this huge amount of underwriting, and it involves a lot of compliance work on your part from 
uh, accounting and all that. I have uh, two quick stories about working capital. I'm really proud of Danny and, and the team and everything that we've done to grow that program. One of them uh, was really fun because we had a client that had probably been with us for like five or six years on the credit card processing side, uh, Brian McCracken and, and Dana Tuff, and they had some pretty uh, renowned restaurants and bars, Cavern Lawn, Capitol Hill, and uh, Spur Gastro Pub and Coachery Room, where we're doing our holiday party on Saturday, actually, for our employees. Um, but anyway, they, they had a new location that they had, had identified, and they were really excited about it. And they called me probably on a Wednesday or Thursday, and I pulled aside Danny, and we had a nice conversation about it. And they said, well, we, we haven't made a final decision yet, so we don't need to start the underwriting process, but we got some expectations about it. Well, things move pretty fast sometimes when you're, entre when you're an entrepreneur. And they actually called us on a Sunday afternoon and said, we actually need to sign a letter of intent tonight, or we're going to lose the space. So we need you guys to give us a decision, which we don't normally like to do this quick, but we need you guys to give us a decision in Sunday afternoon, by Sunday night, or we're going to lose our space, and we're never going to have a chance to get this space again. And so we were able to come through with them on uh, you know, a pretty decent amount of money, I won't disclose exactly, but well over $100,000. Um, working capital deal in that type of time frame. And that was really exciting. And then there was another one, one of my personal favorite restaurants, La Carte de Oaxaca, which has been a client of ours for a long time. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with it. They were opening up a new location in Capitol Hill, and they actually received an SBA loan for their Queen Anne location. And they'd gone through the whole process, and you know, our, our uh, funds, our financing products, are much more affordable than our competitors, our direct competitors that do this. But generally speaking, if you don't count the cost of compliance and underwriting, they are quite a bit more expensive than a bank. And so I asked him, you know, why do you want to do this with us as opposed to this bank? Because he's completely bankable, he can turn around and get a loan. And it was purely based on kind of the ease of him as an entrepreneur being able to have predictability, get the money quickly, not go through that process, and he saved so much money by not going through that process, that actually our financing program ended up being cheaper than the bank's financing program, uh, which was really exciting. And uh, it's, it's really been a, a really fun, you know, kind of dream come true for us to have this type of involvement in the community and be able to do more and more things to add value. But hey, uh, listen, just to wrap up the night, um, Really fun evening, uh, really proud of everybody that presented and proud of everybody on the team that uh, had such a big impact on the products. I, uh, I will leave with, uh, with a couple things. Um, if you see anybody walk around with a gravity shirt like this, they're a colleague of mine and they can answer any question that you have, number one. But number two, we have a request for you. We would love it if you would be our advocate out there in the community, if you would refer us business. I know a lot of people in the, in the room have. If you would let people know that we're hiring, that we're growing, that we're looking for talented people to join. And everybody in this Gravity Shirt tonight has one simple promise to you if you do that. You will not regret it. We will earn your trust, we'll continue to earn your trust, we won't take it for granted. And if you're out there advocating for us, you'll know that the business owner that chooses to use us will not regret their decision, and they'll be happy for you, that, or, or, or appreciative of you, that you made that connection, that you opened that door. And so, you know, what's an ideal client for us on the business side? We love independent businesses, large and small. You know, we can do process for businesses that are in the billions of dollars that still have that independent entrepreneurial spirit. And we can process for businesses that are mom and pops, you know, and anything in between. Um, and so, you know, we really uh, run the gambit and industries and all those types of things. In terms of people that we are looking for to join Gravity, we're looking for people that are future-oriented, that want to create the future, that aren't stuck in the past, and, you know, they care about the present, but they're willing to work for our clients, work for each other, make sacrifices in the, uh, in the present to create a better future together for all of us. Because we really believe that we can have an amazing long-term impact and make things better. A lot of um, businesses out there and a lot of industries aren't really that friendly to their, to their clients, to their customers. You know, think of the last time you dealt with your bank, your credit card, uh, your cable company, 
your insurance company. And there are many, many great companies in those industries, but there's also a lot of companies that just don't treat their clients the right way. And we think by making some of these changes, along with a lot of our colleagues in other industries and other companies, we can actually make a difference and just make this a better place to live, make this a better place to be alive and have a better future. So with that, thank you for coming. Uh, please enjoy a drink and uh, looking forward to talking to you. Thanks.